declare this great day and let's rejoice in it right here. Say, come on, say, this is the day. Thank you so much for joining us once again for our midweek expression. I pray that you've had a wonderful week. You had a great holiday. And uh, I want you to know I am so excited about what God is doing on tonight. I pray that this lesson blesses you the same way that it blessed me. You know, I don't I don't come uh, on Wednesdays and, and go line by line and, and, and do the questions and answers like we do when we have our, our in-house uh, Bible study. However, I know without a shadow of a doubt that these short lessons can be such a blessing to you because they're very poignant and they and they share with you life, real life truths. So I pray that I'm, I've been able to help you guys uh, on Wednesday night. And uh, so on tonight, we have another opportunity to hear from God. So if you would turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Uh, very familiar passage of scripture. Uh, you, may have, you may have heard it yourself or you may have read it yourself. And if you haven't, I want you to know that God is, is sharing this explicitly for you. And as always, family, I pray that you don't just keep this to yourself. I pray that you share it with your family, share it with your friends. You never know who might need to hear a word from God. And listen, we all go through. Unfortunately, all of us don't have an opportunity to reach out uh, to them in a, in, a, in a medium as to where they can be blessed by the word of God to give them some solace in their circumstances. Amen. 
Amen. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. It reads, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. And family, just for a moment, I want you to really focus on the fact of, of part A of this text. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's not against people. It's not against your folk. It's not against your family. It's, 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 it's not with them at all. But yet it's against the rulers, against the authorities, and against the powers of this dark world. Amen. And for, for a few moments, I want to utilize this topic for our discussion, family. Facing earthly struggles. Facing earthly struggles. You know, family, uh, growing up, my, 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 grand, my great-grandmother and I used to frequent what, uh, professional wrestling. Yeah, and uh, you couldn't tell me that, that that wasn't the best way to spend a Friday or a Saturday night. And, 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 and as a young boy, man, I was on this roller coaster, uh, this emotional roller coaster. I, I cheered at one moment. The next moment I was crying because my favorite wrestler was bleeding or he was hurt. And, and I, man, I mean, then it would get so good and I'd get so into it, man. I'd find myself stomping on the floor, beating on the chairs, you know, and cheering and shouting throughout the entire matches. And I mean, listen, I didn't fight, but I was just as tired when we left because I was so caught up in all that was going on. To me, and to my great-grandmother, Nettie Mae, all of that was real. And, all, and since then, although I've heard that for the most part it's mostly staged, for entertainment and wrestlers. They were putting on a show for, for, for fans like me and Nettie Mae. But I want you to understand, for us, it was a real battle being fought between good and evil. Mr. Goody Two Shoes pitted against his evil nemesis. And, and some of you may know what I'm talking about. Wahoo McDaniel. Wow, Fritz Von, uh, uh, Von Erich, the Claw. Or uh, Andre the Giant. And, and too many others to recall. But I remember how real it appeared. Finally, likewise, we and, and, and thousands of other fans that participated in the wrestling experience, even now, may be unaware of what's really happening in pro wrestling events. See, oftentimes, real life situations, just like those wrestling situations, can be deceiving to, to, to those that are looking merely at the outward appearances, merely at the actions of what's going on, only what our eyes can see. It seems real, and it feels like individuals are, and, and groups are coming up against us as our personal enemies. However, as in our text tonight, Scripture reminds us that there is more to what's really occurring beyond what we see, beyond what we feel and experience. And although the opposition may look, although the opposition may feel personal, in reality, they are really opposing God and those who represent him on this earth. See, just like wrestling, it looks real. The situations in our lives, they feel real, and they are. And they, and they feel like they're coming from the individual that's directing them at you, but we need to understand, it's not them, but it's those who represent the evil forces that have that are on this earth. Most, most of our earthly opponents are even unaware of how they're actually being played by the devil to go after you and I. 
And let me just clean up something because it's not just folk that don't call on the name of Jesus. It's not just folk who don't believe in God. It's Christians. It's folk that have confessed him as their personal Lord and Savior. It's Christians who, who work in the church, preach from the pulpit, usher you to your seat, sing in the choir, play the music, melodious music for the Lord. It can be those too that are unaware of how Satan, unaware of how, 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 how evil is directing their lives. And yes, we do take it personal because we hear it with our ears. We see it with our eyes. We feel it with our hearts. And sometimes we physically feel it because they're trying to put hands on us. They're trying to hurt us. So we have no other choice but to look at it at face value and say, why are you coming after me? Why are you hurting me? Why are you talking about me? Why are you gossiping about me? Why are you trying to take me down at my job? Why are you trying to get me put out of my position? Why are you doing what it is that you're doing? You need to understand, yes, they are doing it, but who are they doing it for? Who's using them? To prevent you from achieving, from doing what God would desire you to do. See, we need to understand that it's much deeper than most of us. And it's even more deeper than many of them that's doing it understand. See, these family are spiritual forces. There are spiritual forces that are behind their feelings, spiritual forces that are behind them in their actions, and they're causing them to believe that they are expressing their own thoughts, expressing their own feelings, when in truth they are being influenced by evil spiritual forces that hate God. Corinthians 2 Corinthians 4 and 4 describes, it says, The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. See, family, beyond their own comprehension, unbelievers are being used to war with God. And not just unbelievers. Believers are being used with many being completely unaware of who's leading them in their thinking and in their actions. Now, I, I said that the topic of this lesson is facing struggles. So how do we successfully face struggles? That's a good question. See, often we as believers, see, we, we can lose sight of who it is that's fighting us, causing us to start trying to wrestle on a human level. But God has called you and I to a higher form of defense on a spiritual level because that's where the real scuffle is taking place. I, don't take me wrong, family. I, listen, I come from the street. Don't take me wrong, family. I have issues with not with, with, with folk talking about me, with folk trying to put hands on me, with folk taking my stuff, with folk hurting my family. I got issues with that. And sometimes I just want to put hands on them. Can I be real? But that's not how God desires for you and I as believers to deal with the struggles of this world. So how do we face struggles on a spiritual level from a human standpoint? How do we do that? Well, I'm glad you asked because the first thing that I want to share with you is that you need to pray. Yes, you do. James 5 and 16 explains how the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So family, spending time in prayer is the number one defense of, against the attacks of our spiritual enemies. 
First, First Chronicles 5 and 20 describes how when some of the tribes of Israel were in combat with their enemies, God heard their cries during the battle and answered their prayers for help. Why? Because they trusted him. Listen, family, that lets me know that even if you make the mistake of getting into it in, in a physical way, even if you get into it with your mouth, you're talking, you, 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 you find yourself using language that you know is not godly, you find yourself doing things to get back at them even though you know it's not godly, even though you find yourself in an ungodly situation, if you're in the midst of the war, you can have solace that even if you stop right there and pray, God can come in and deal with your circumstances. Prayer should be our first defense. But too many times we want to get back. Too many times we want to hurt them. Too many times we want to fight. Too many times we want to use our own judgment instead of doing what God says. God says prayers of a righteous man. What? Availing much. Now, don't take me wrong, family. I know this can be hard. I know it can. Somebody's hurt you. Somebody's hurt your heart. Some somebody has 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 done the the unex, unexplainable to you, and you cannot understand why God one is allowing you to go through what you're going through. Two, you can't understand why God don't want you to fight back. He because the Bible says that vengeance is mine, said the Lord. Let him fight your battles. Let God deal with your situation. Let God deal with the one that tried to hurt you. Let God deal with the one that talked about you. Let God deal with them. And the only way you're going to bring God in the situation is, first of all, pray and ask him. It's no different than being here, than being here on earth. Listen, somebody trying to hurt you, somebody trying to break into your house, what do you do? Listen, you call 911. Why? Because you want the police to come and deal with whoever it is that's trying to come into your home, that's, that's trying to take what's yours or trying to hurt you. You want the police to come. Well, likewise, you get on your knees and dial 911 and talk to the father and you tell him what's going on and you let him deal with it. But not only that, family, not only that, not only should you pray, once you pray, you should praise. Hello, somebody. Once you pray, you should praise. Second Chronicles 20, 20, 20, 21, 22 describes a battle scene where, uh, whereas King Jehoshaphat sent men ahead of his army to sing to the Lord and praise him for the splendor of his holiness, saying, Give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. So finally, as they begin to sing and as they begin to praise the Lord, God calls the enemy to begin fighting amongst themselves rather than attacking the, the, the enemy or, the, or, or his army. Can I share something with you? When you praise God in the midst, listen, I know some of you saying, listen, man, it's hard to praise when I'm hurting. It's hard to praise when, when I'm in pain. It's hard to praise when I'm downcast. Well, can I share something with you? That's when you ought to be praying. You ought to be telling God and th thank you. You should be singing, God, you are wonderful. You are the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. And I praise you for what I know what you're about to do. I know you're about to turn it around. I know you're about to bring me out. You ought to praise God in the midst of your troubles. Pray and praise. They go together. See, finally, praise is a, is a powerful defense in the life of every believer. Exodus 15 and 2 says, the Lord is my strength and my defense. He, he has become my salvation. He is my God. This is a praise, and I will praise him, my Father's God, and I will exalt him. Praise. Pray and praise. You see, finally, when you use those the spiritual weapons when you're in battle, you find that, one, you don't find yourself in trouble. Two, you find out just how good, just how faithful God can be. Now, I know some of you are saying, well, Pastor, sometimes God don't come quick enough. Well, one thing I learned from, from, from my old grandmother, my grandmother said, he may not come when you want him, 
but he's always on time. Family, pray and praise. That's how you face your earthly battles. That's how you deal with your circumstances. Pray and praise. Pray and praise. I know I've said it before. I'm just making sure you get it. Pray and praise. That's how you deal. Keep your hands to yourself. Let the Lord fight your battles. Keep your mouth closed. Old folks, you say, if you can't say nothing good, don't say nothing. Yeah. I, I, some of you know what I'm talking about. Don't say nothing at all. Pray and praise. That's what will get you through the struggles that you will endure while you're on this side of heaven. May God bless you and may God keep you as our prayer. Will you bow with me? Father, we thank you so much for what you've shared with us. We thank you so much for your encouragement in your word. Now, Father, I pray for those that are struggling right now. In whatever way they may be struggling, I know that you are able, able to deal with all of our issues, absolutely every one. So, Lord, I pray now that you move in the lives of your people. Touch them hard. Give them the grace to hold on. Please, Jesus. And when they find themselves in the midst of a storm, I, with everything within my being, I pray that they pray and that they praise you all, even though the answer may not come when they want it. I thank you because you are always on time. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you. And it's in your name, Jesus Christ, we pray it all. Amen. And thank God. Family, thank you again so much for joining us on, on tonight. I prayed that something was said that would actually bless your heart. Again, somebody might need to hear this that that's not listening right now share it on you on your on your social media page share it on facebook share it on instagram or wherever you happen to 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 spend your time on social media i think it would be a blessing to anyone to know that we're not fighting against those that we can see we're fighting against those that we cannot see therefore we can't use our earthly weapons to fight what only god can defeat Amen. Take care. I pray that you have a wonderful evening, rest of the week. I hope to see you either in person or online at 9 o'clock for our Sunday school time and at 10 o'clock for our time of worship. Be blessed. Have a wonderful week. And don't ever forget, I love you and there's nothing you can do about it.